Bitcoin has just lost the most important support level on the chart, the value area low. And with losing this, it does activate a big sign of weakness. I am now prepared fully for lower prices to come. I am not going to be entering any long trades here. I am going to be explaining in this video, really preparing you as always in a professional focused way of how you can be prepared for the next best high probability trading setup. Because I do know right now, I know for a fact there are so many emotions flying around in this market. And what does that really mean? It means a lot of bad trading decisions are about to be made by millions of people. So of course, I'm not going to be able to reach millions of people in this video, but I can help the ones that select to view this video. Uh, I will be able to help you. It's as simple as that. I will educate you to let you understand what's happening, what we're looking at next, and the high probability trading setups. That does give us potential for longs close by. And of course, short trades. We're happy to long. We're happy to short. We just want the best trades in and out, get our profits, move on to the next trade. If that sounds good to you, if you're actually interested in profits, this is the place to be. And with that said, let me get into the charts and explain what is going on here. We can see we're getting a bit of a bounce from the the monthly level of support that we had around $60,600. Is this time for a long or should? Could you be waiting for lower? I personally am. I'm going to explain why in this video. I did not long this monthly. I've not took a, took a new long uh, over the weekend or today. Uh, the last long I took was on Friday. And let me explain very briefly this long, how it ended and, you know, what I am looking at next, why I do have that bearish bias. Of course, our theory on Friday was we had seen this area of support holding up very nicely for a little bit of a rounded bottom. The theory overall was we are going to be going lower. We will take out these lows to take out the massive amount of early longs that we saw to hit the anchored VWAP that we slightly front run. So the theory was this is a nice long trade setup that we can take up to resistance to take profit on the long, potentially take some short trades and trade it back down below this low. We can see in the end how that worked out. That trade did hit a nice take profit one. Actually, in the end, of course, my stop loss has now been hit on this trade, but got out with overall $600 of profit. So it was OK. Um, the reason why was, well, as you all know, if you watch the stream, we had the take profit one above this high. So we hit in the take profit one, of course, updated the champions as we hit that take profit one. And then during the weekend, we just went absolutely sideways. <laughs> Nothing going on at all uh, before this drop to the downside, which did activate my stop loss. OK, so I got out with around six hundred dollars of profit. So not the best, not the worst trade. It was OK in the end. Uh, and of course, that just activated what we were looking at this morning of absolutely going to be looking for lower prices to come this is very bearish locally this is what i was posting today at 9 a.m uk time so still while we we're around sixty-three thousand dollars. okay it was just very obvious that this is you know a, a very big sign of weakness and while we're down here we got to be looking put towards that big psychological sixty thousand dollars so even over the past few hours we have dropped another three thousand dollars so uh you know this is why i was bearish with <laughs> Just dropped another three thousand dollars right but um yeah for me it's kind of simple what i'm looking at here so let me just explain this to you uh, as you knew from friday right i was very focused on this value area low being an important level and we can see the value area low how it gave us a little bit of a bounce to the upside ultimately just hitting a take profit one stopped on the rest of the trade uh, ending in a profitable trade nevertheless but what we have to recognize is what is going on here more locally low highs low highs lower lows lower 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 highs lower lows we can rally up for a lower high and continue and get that big psychological level we are clearly making just a series of lower highs and a series of lower lows that in itself is bearish we lost the massive important support of range point of control support flipped it into resistance clear as day support resistance flip after we lost the point of control the massive next important support is the value area low we lost the value area low there was not even a reaction on a lower term time frame here we just went straight down through the level as you can see this is the value area low support bam straight down through okay uh let me just da -da 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 -da. i want to line this up exactly i do not want to rush this video let me just show you very precisely there's the value area low. We'll come down on a lower term time frame. As you can see on the retest that we had this morning, well, there was in, in essence no retest. We just went straight through the level, 
He even got a little bit of a back test as support into resistance before this big continuation to the downside. Okay, so this is the beauty of if you were waiting for a new long trade setup of an SFP or type trade of these lows, well, there is no setup, right? As you just go straight through the level. And so I always like to see that. So I will always say trade the reaction. Um, do not preset. Okay. Uh, so yeah, really simple stuff keeps our nice uh, lives nice and easy. And we are making our way down here. I will say that I did do on Sunday a champions live stream. And as I posted on Twitter for you all yesterday, this was the uh, focused on the bearish Elliott wave count, which is the highest probability. So if you do want to see my new uh, updated bearish Elliott wave count, that is live now on the website for the champions. And you can catch that in champions live stream 263 focused on Elliott waves. Uh, but here for this video on YouTube, I'm just going to be explaining this, what we have in terms of, well, I'm going to call it the key level. And this is really simply this psychological level. We have seen this during the past. Uh, really, it came to our light as a new pattern around six months ago. And really, this came to tradable uh, two months ago, for me anyway, because it takes time to recognize that pattern and run the statistics, right? Uh, and now what we actually saw back here on May was the front run of 60,000 psychological. So like we've been seeing over the past a uh, few weeks, right? We saw the ever so slight front run here of $65,000. We saw it here, the ever so slight front run of $66,000. And here we saw the ever so slight front run of $64,000. So we've seen this pattern, right? Ever so slight front run rally, slight front run rally, slight front run rally. Well, here we ever so slightly front run the anchored view app slight rally dump. So this is this is the initiation of it, right? Slight front run of $60,000, the biggest psychological level of them all, the big zero, 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 zeros. Um, so really simply overall, I do expect this to be taken out as I expect it. As you all know, I did short this exact high. That was based off of my harmonic pattern in the time, which never got invalidated. And, you know, thankfully I've, I've got a nice short running on Bitcoin, but that was from this butterfly harmonic, if you remember correctly, right? OK, uh, and from here, we're now making our way back down to the low of C. We've hit. I have already hit two take profits, by the way, on this trade, uh, but the majority is still running. I recognize it's a potential swing. And so what I'm looking for next is the low of the C pivot that we had here. Uh, this is uh, not only the low of C, which is important in this harmonic, but also the uh, key psychological 60,000. So here we hit 60,000 and $102. So really, my thought process is we will be taking out this low. OK, so that's what I'm looking for next. And then guess what, my friends? I will be waiting for the reaction here. I will make an informed decision upon hitting this low. I will come over to the order flow in this order flow. I will be looking. Let me hide myself so you can see. I will be looking at the time, the trade counts, H&L of those candles, which is the high and low. Combining this with the volume delta, we can see how many wrecked candles there are in here, the open interest and the delta. This is what I call making an informed decision using hard, cold statistical evidence. This is evidence. This is not, uh, you know, this is real in front of your eyes. And using that data uh, is what I call making an informed decision. OK, I will look at those numbers as we hit those lows and see things such as do we have trapped would be trapped shorts into the low. Okay. Um, how many? Okay. Let me again. Yeah, I have to think because not everyone understands it. So you have to understand when I'm looking at these candles, for example, they are based off of, uh, you cannot see this. There you go. Now you can. So this is based off of 10 million volume. So my candles here are based off of volume. They are not time candles. So I know not everybody understands this, but you, this is basically based off a of uh, volume anyway. So um, this is a 10 million volume candle. So that's why it's important to see the time it takes to build that candle. Uh, and of course, the trade count. That's way, that way I can recognize using a volume based candle with the time and trade counts of it. Is this formed by big quick, large sellers? Is it a load of small sellers selling into this level? And then when I back it up with the order flow with the open interest and the delta, that's where I can start to see, are they big traders trapped? Are they short? Are they small traders trapped? You know, a bunch of small orders, are one big, big order, you know, using this, you know, simply put evidence data, I make my informed decisions of, okay, now we've taken out 60K. Is this an option for a reversal long trade? So for example, you take out that low and you get a reversal, 
or if we do not get the reaction that I want, we make our way down through that level. We do end in no significant reaction and no, thus simply no long trade. And we make our way back down towards the range, overall range low, right? Which is, uh, for me, way back, if you can remember, um, <clears throat> from the pivot low at the start of May, of course, to the highs that there at $74,000. So that's what I would be looking at next in terms of uh, my personal next important support level. Uh, which is simply the psychological level. I do not class this as a major level of support, by the way. This is a small level of support where I could get into a long trade scope um, slash day trade and take that if we get a sign of strength, which doesn't look like it's coming at the moment, but it could uh, into a swing trade. So this is what I would call a minor level. It's not a golden level. It's not a very strong level, but it is the next level of my interest sparked from the psychological level itself and what I am remaining patient for. Again, we have seen this trend, lower lows, lower highs, each lower low, guess what? Does get a bit of a rally. So if we are rallying from, remember where we are at, we're at the monthly. So it's not like we can forget where we're at right now. We are currently bouncing off this monthly. So we can get this intraday rally. Where does that intraday rally potentially turn into strength? For me, that's above 65,000. If we reclaim 65,000, then I will have to say I missed this long trade opportunity. And then I would say in hindsight, well, I should along the monthly, my mistake waiting for the psychological level. And this is just part of trading. We cannot uh, win every trade we take. We cannot take every trade that's on the chart. I wait for what I class as the best trades. Uh, based off of my statistics and that does mean that I will sometimes miss trades and I would prefer let me make this I want you to really 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 understand this I as a trader would prefer to miss a trade than take a low quality trade and take a loss I am happy to miss a trade but I'm not happy to take an unnecessary loss that is painful for me as a trader to know I took a loss out of not being patient for not waiting for the best trades for trading out of boredom and just that need of a gambler to want to be in a trade all the time that is not me that is not who I am I am a trader that waits for the best and that's how I get the win rates that I have okay so for me that's so important that you understand if I miss this trade I don't lose any money I'm happy I'm comfortable with that I'm content in my decisions that I make as a trader so if we do rally from this monthly I understand why we rally from here and I also understand I'm not going to make any money from that rally because I didn't take the long but I'm most importantly not going to lose anything and okay this is what I'm trading with my conservative trading account I have not taken a trade on this conservative account over the past week why is that well look at this pretty much all my trades are long trades. And so if I've not been given, again, this is a conservative account that really is just trading altcoins. And so if all the altcoins right now are getting wrecked left, right, and center, well, I prefer to remain patient for a high probability long trade setup on the alt than get chopped up taking bad trades. Because what would you prefer? Think about it. Would you prefer a PNL curve that over the past month is on the uptrend or would you prefer a PL curve kind of obvious that just has a load of dents and a load of losses through taking bad trades not remaining patient during times of weakness okay if you're like me anyway and you do prefer to long alts I do think you can make more money on the altcoin longs than you can do shorts again I understand you can make money shorting altcoins I'm not against shorting altcoins uh, but yeah, on this conservative account, I am just primarily focused on the longs. And so if I recognize we're in a downtrend right now, I got to remain patient. It's the same as on Bitcoin. Um, you know, there are some long trades to be had. And I have took a few aggressive longs on this, this um, downtrend, right? But the, the best trades, of course, in a downtrend are going to be shorts. So it's just a kind of then recognizing if I want to remain patient for the best, I got to understand I will miss some trades or go through a time of patient where I'm not taking a trade. But I would say that one final time, I would prefer to miss a trade and not lose any money than take a bad trade and lose money. You know, that's just the way that I work. And that is why I have not longed this monthly and I am waiting for the next level of 60,000 psychological. Again, if we lose 60,000 psychological, then that's where I'll be looking more down towards the range low. So that is what I want. I want to end with one final thing here. And that is um, a really nice golden little nugget for you. Because I had a lot of questions about this today. 
And that was when we were looking at this range, you see how I've been really explaining the importance of the range, point of control, value area high and value area low. So these are for me have been very, very important. I just want you to see for yourself one final time, this value area low, important support resistance. Resistance reclaimed, rallied up to value area high. Here, support lost, big dump to the downside. Look at the importance of the point of control, point of control. Okay, value area high, ended with a little bit of a fake out, but we can see four hour close. Oh, this was on the four hour as well. Here we are on the 12 hour, but it's the same on the four hour, up, straight back down, up, straight back down. Okay, I'll just show you. Okay, da, 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 da. once it's loaded here, you see no consecutive closes above. As soon as we get up, we just get four straight back down. So the respect of these value areas are very, very, very amazing. And so a question that I had today is, Daniel, the values are different, for example, on Binance. The values are different, for example, on Coinbase. Why do you still trade uh, and chart, sorry, the BTC USD chart on Bybit? And I say this as I have been for as long as I can remember. This is the most respected chart. I'm not even trading the USD chart anymore. I, I trade the Tether chart now. But guess what? I'm still using this as my primary form of analysis because it's just simply the most respected on the order flow. It's the most respected on the actual analysis on the chart itself too. And so I just refer you to, for example, Coinbase. So pull the exact same pull that we have on Bybit and you can see for yourself, right? The respect that we had for that trade setup on Friday of the value area low. That gave a nice bounce and it did give us a winning trade. Whereas if you are looking at the same information, same pull, but again, every exchange has different data. Look at Coinbase today, value area low, bam, straight through. So it just goes to me and really just backs up what I'm thinking of um, and what I have <laughs> as data that. Buy bit USD is the most respected chart. The values are the most respected. And today is just another example um, of you trade the buy bit value area low. Well, it didn't end in a full blown reversal, but it did give a winning trade. You know, that was a good enough bounce. Again, we knew the perspective was a day trade. We knew that we were going to take out that low, right? So it gave a winning trade. But if you've done that same trade, for example, off of the Coinbase chart, or you're taking that long at the value area low and you're instantly getting stopped out. There, there was no reaction. There was no trade. Whereas, you know, you can see for yourself the reaction that you had on the Bybit chart. So this is just another uh, example of a, so many examples that I have of why I trade the order flow looking at Bybit, why I find this the most respected, most useful chart to be trading, to be, to be analyzing. And, um, you know, even though I trade now primarily the USDT chart, Tether chart, still using this as my primary go-to uh, chart. And I will end with the final bit of news uh, to make you aware of this if you are not already. And that is really simply that there is these Mika regulations. So I had a question about this today uh, in the Champions, and I will answer it here on stream as well. So just so you're aware of this, uh, there are regulations coming to crypto heavily. And Binance is the first exchange that they're going after. And of course, these regulations are essentially to stop all centralized exchanges trading in uh, Europe. You know, they've already conquered North America. Now they're going after Europe. So uh, from the end of this month, Binance traders, you're just going to start to get harder and harder and harder to trade. More and more regulations, more and more lockdowns. And naturally, Binance is the biggest exchange. So they are going after Binance first. Uh, would I go after Bybit? Yes, uh, probably net towards more actually next year and onwards. So this is just something to be aware of. You know, you should be aware of these regulations. You should be aware how it affects those exchanges. And yeah, just really simply put, Binance are the first affected. And I do know a lot of uh, people trade on Binance. So just do your own research, look into how this is going to affect you. And naturally, I have... Um, I, I don't trade on Binance. Everybody knows that by now. <laughs> but you do have to understand there are options out there if you trade on Binance. And I will just put this out here, right? Um, that if you are interested in joining a new exchange, well, Chart Champions, we are <laughs> a very big, much the leaders of education in this space. So we can get partnerships with the best exchanges. Okay. So of course, I'm trading on Bybit. But if you want to go after Bing X, Femex, if you want some prop firms, OK, we, of course, partner with exchanges we enjoy using ourselves where we would happily trade. Um, and again, there is no financial advice. We are not really saying you have to do this. This is just an option. If you would like to find a new exchange or a prop firm, give them a go. Well, then we put in research and think, OK, 
you know, for example, should people you be trading on top step or should they be trading on apex? Well, we've done our research, we've got the results and, and top step is a much more respected exchange or prop firm that we would like to work with the same, for example, with Bybit, we have a long working relationship with these people. But again, you can make your own decisions. Uh, basically with these referral codes, you will get a kickback okay um on your decreases on fees you will also get extra vip levels so there are advantages to using these links if you would like to again it's totally optional uh, and i just leave this as a reminder at the end of this video that if you would like to um if you would like to take advantage of that i will leave the deals link in the description comments down below where you can come over and sign up to a new place to trade if that is of interest to you but as again always do your own research on these places at the end of the day is your money and i'm not a financial advisor so just yeah remember that as always but uh yeah the main focus of this video was of course to educate you uh give you a plan let you understand my next levels of interest which once again sixty five thousand dollars above us sixty thousand dollars below us uh, i am remaining patient happily for the again i do have a bearish bias i am expecting the lower target to be hit so that is sixty thousand psychological and if we do not get the reaction there hey i'll happily see fifty thousand dollars come I'm, I'm happy to see a bigger drop and i'm also happy guess what to see a big rise to the upside would like to see that first of course after a reactionary trade where i can be in the trade again if we bounce from the monthly i am not in this as i have not longed yet on bitcoin and i have no plans to until we take out sixty thousand psychological so yeah, this has been a little bit of a longer video, but I have really tried to put in some time here to make you fully understand. As you can see, there should be no scaredness, no emotions uh, of scared, fearful, all this type of stuff. Just this is the trades. These are the highest probabilities. These are the levels to be patient for. If you don't get the reaction, wait for the next high probability trade setup. And the only way that you can be going after such high win rates, such nice PNL growth curves are by remaining patient wait for those best trade setups you know if you want to tra follow a trade that's ultra aggressive losing you know 70 percent of their trades well there's people out there that will gamble away their money i'm here in the long term you've seen me over the years i've, I've never missed days of trading that's because well simply i i can withstand the tests of time uh and so yeah if you want to learn my ways, you know how to do it via chartchampions.com. I thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've learned something. And if you want more live trading, full educational library, um, everything else in between, chartchampions.com. I thank you ever so much. I hope this has been helpful. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. And that's me signing out. Goodbye. Cheers.